Hi everyone. We're going to talk about introducing authors and in-text citation. When you're introducing an author, when you're writing, you want to think about this like a formal introduction. You want to assume that the author is a stranger to you and a stranger to your audience and that you plan to introduce them. An example is if President Obama was introducing Nancy Reagan to an audience, he wouldn't say, hey everyone, this is Reagan. He would say, hello everyone, this is our former First Lady, Nancy Reagan. And doing that full formal introduction would be the respectful way to do it. So when you're writing, the same idea comes into play. You want to be respectful and introduce the author by his or her full name first. This also informs your readers the full name of the author in case they want to know what the first name is. Now you can think about um, maybe friends you've known or met. When you first met them, maybe you were more formal in the way you call, uh, talk to them or you might have called them Mr. So-and-so. But as you got to know somebody, then you're comfortable calling them by first name or last name only. And this principle is kind of what applies in writing as well. Once we have introduced the author by his or her full name, we have the liberty to call them by last name only. And I'm sure that you've seen many texts where authors are referred to by their last name only, but notice that that full introduction always comes before that. So I want you to think about that when you are writing your discussion board posts to make sure to introduce the author by his or her full name only first and then you can go on to refer to him or her by last name only. So here's an example. In Pam Houston's short story, I was a captain in Colonel Bob's army, she reflects on the idea of guardian angels. Houston does this by sharing her own experience with readers. So you can see how Pam Houston is introduced in with her full name first and then the writer goes on to introduce or to talk about her by last name only. All right, next, we're going to look at in-text citation because we want to make sure that we are giving credit to the authors and the quotations that we use from them. We can't claim those words as our own because that would be plagiarism. So doing, um, get, making proper in-text citation to credit authors is a very important skill to learn so you don't get um, accused of plagiarism. So here are some examples. So often in the citation here at the end, you'll, you'll many times see a couple things. You'll see the author's last name and a page number, or if the reference that you're referring to doesn't have an author but only a, an article title, or something like that, you might see the first couple words of that article title within the citation. But for our purposes, we're just going to think about last name and page number, because in your discussion boards, this is what you'll be using. So I want you to look at this example. In Pam Houston's story, in the company of fishermen, she says that fly fishing, like all religions, is something I respect but don't particularly understand. So you see here, since Pam Houston's name is introduced first, that we do not have to include her last name in the citation. We only need the page number of where the quote came from because we already have this information here. We know it's by Houston and we don't need that information in the citation. So here's the rule. If you have already introduced the author beforehand, you only need to list the page number in the citation. The other thing I want you to notice here is this period. Now normally when you're using a quote, the period goes inside the quotation marks here, right? But when there is an in-text citation, it changes the rules. The period does not go there anymore if there's a citation right afterward. It disappears and it ends up after the citation. So take note of that. This is the way to properly punctuate after an in-text citation that is at the end of a sentence. All right, let's move on. All right, so if you 
have not introduced the author beforehand, the same citation would look like this. Having been a fisherman my whole life, I agree that fly fishing, like all religions, is something I respect but don't particularly understand. Now you see here that Pam Houston's name has not been introduced beforehand. In that case, both her last name and the page number the quote came from need to be in the citation so that readers know who said this quote. You need to know that last name. All right, now very briefly, we're gonna go over paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is a way to use text in your writing without directly quoting the source material. So it's your own rendition of essential information and ideas expressed by someone else presented in a new form. So you're basically taking ideas without directly quoting them and including them in your essay or in the text that you're writing. And this can be valuable because it's better than quote, quoting information from an undistinguished passage. It helps you control the temptation to quote too much. And the mental process required for successful paraphrasing helps you grasp the full meaning of the original material. So here are a couple examples of paraphrasing. And the main point I wanna make here is that if you're taking text or ideas from this original paragraph, even though you're rewording it, since the, the um, idea came from this passage, you're still going to need to use a citation at the end. Now notice here, when there's two pages, that there's a dash between. That's called an end dash. It's a narrow, the more narrow dash. So pages 46 to 47, you would use that end dash in between to indicate the um, gap between the pages. Um, I think you might have seen in the past where sometimes they would put a comma. Okay, so I'm going to type this in here. Lester is the last name of the author. And there used to be a comma there sometimes in citations and then the page number. That is no longer correct. So you do not want a comma in between those two items. You just want the last name of the author and then the page number. All right. So we do need to have um, in-text citation when there's paraphrasing as well so we can give credit to the author who gave us those ideas because without that in-text citation um, there could be an issue of plagiarism and we want to avoid that so how does in-text citation help the reader when you properly use in-text citation it's a reference knowing the author's name and the page number enables readers to refer to the works cited page and find the particular publication you use to find your material. So let's look at a works cited page. Uh, here's the general idea of a works cited page. We've got the works cited, not page. Let's take that out there. It should just be works cited up here. That's centered up top. And we have our works cited in alphabetical order we have the second and subsequent lines below the main entry um, indented that's called hanging indentation but how this serves the reader is say they see this name clancy in the citation and they're very interested in finding out what this article is about so they can just go right to your works cited page and say oh this is kate clancy here's the article she wrote I can look this up. Same thing um, if they see the reference of Kafka. And here you can see an example of an entry having no known author. So they're just using the title um, to start that, that works cited reference. So I hope this helps you to understand how to introduce authors properly and how to use that in-text citation properly within your writing. And as always, if you have any questions, please email me and I can help you get that format um, going correctly. All right, I'll talk to you later.